No, we've been up um, probably about 30 hours at that point, solid. So, police escort racing through the streets of Manila, exciting stuff. No, no deaths that I'm aware of. I mean, within Nine Inch Nails, all I've really tried to do is try to, um, you know, I pay attention to the technology, I'm interested in it, and various forms of new media, the way people communicate now. I've tried to adapt Nine Inch Nails to um, utilizing that as much as possible, tastefully, hopefully not, not in a gimmicky way, but trying to uh, it, um, not expand it beyond music so much, but just basically... Um, Keep it relevant and interesting and whatever. I'm trying to see. I'm trying to believe. This is not where I should be. I'm trying to believe. We're in the process of trying to turn Year Zero into a television series, and that would be a multimedia type scenario that wouldn't just be a series, but it would also live virally in a kind of an ARG on the web, and we have a pretty master plan for the whole thing. And I don't know if that's going to come to fruition because it's up to other people's approval, you know, but we're, we're in the process of trying to make it happen. And if it does, that has a much more global-centric view. It's not strictly U.S. But in America, we also share your sentiment that it feels like a great, uh, it feels like a great relief and also a, 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 def, a definite turning of a corner to, towards optimism. You know, and certainly there's a lot, a long ways to go, but it feels like somebody with some decency and common sense is in charge versus a corporate madman. Yeah. So. Well, again, this is purely from an American perspective, you know, and it, it, it's, I don't know what it's like in the Philippines here, but being, spending time in Europe, it's always amazing and enlightening to see that there are channels that play music. It might be bad music, but at least it's music, you know. In the States, there really aren't any channels that play music anymore. So, in my mind, the medium of video is pretty much dead because it's, there's no, there's no outlet to see it, unless it's YouTube or on the web. Which is not bad, but um, to answer your question specifically, I think that uh, the blogs and blogs have replaced printed media in terms of power and where people and speed. And I mean, I find out about new music through blogs and the internet. I, I never hear anything on the radio. I don't listen to the radio. Uh, so the power of old media, which would be print and uh, radio and television, I think is greatly diminished and been replaced by blogs, you know, and there is no real independent music channels in America, so I can't, that I know of, so. Well, I think that's, I think it's good, and it's certainly a, a turning point. I think we're, we're, again, from an American perspective, there's a lot of people moaning about there's no superstar acts that are going to be developed now, because there isn't a big enough there isn't a wide enough channel to reach a maximum amount of people. You know, it used to be if you got a big hit on MTV, you can fill an arena out. You know, Nine Inch Nails is proof of that from a U.S. perspective. But now everything's so splintered that uh, there isn't enough. There's enough power behind anything to make things huge. That maybe that's good. You know, because I hear a lot more interesting new music now than I did five years ago, and certainly ten years ago. So. I, mean, I think this industry is figuring itself out. Give it.
around. I grew up in a little town where there wasn't, you know, long before there was the web. And my what I had access to was limited to, this is before MTV even, so it was mainstream music magazines I might find. Um, but so I think it's, it's great that people have access, that A, musicians can broadcast themselves without a record deal, and that people can find stuff anywhere they want. But I think a, a bad consequence of that is it seems like people um, kind of treat music a little less precious than they may have used to, and they spend less time with it. Okay, because when you didn't have access to a lot of music, I'm using myself as an example, and you spent that X amount of money that you couldn't really afford to get a record, you listen to that record, and you listen to, even if you didn't like it, you, you know, you wound up liking it by the end, because that's the music you had, you know? And I miss the days of spending time with music, you know? I, I find an audience today that's so, so based on consumption and collecting and the speed of, hey, this record leaked, I got it, what do you think, it sucks, oh, me too, well, you know, they haven't even listened to it yet, you know? And it's, before it's even released, it's been judged and critiqued and copied and shared and talked about and forgotten. You know, but it's that, that's progress, right? No one needs anyone. They don't even just pretend. Johnny's in America. I'm afraid of Americans. I'm afraid of the world. I'm afraid I can't help. I'm afraid I can't. I'm afraid of America. I'm afraid of the world. I'm afraid I can't help that. I'm afraid I can't. Yeah, I'm afraid of America. I mean, the idea just came to me I'm sitting in a hotel room a few years ago that. Um, you know, it dawned on me that a pretty basic software that's you know free with Macs, for example, and free, I guess, for PCs, equivalent, where you can um, the power of remixing exists on a laptop level computer these days. And I thought it'd be interesting to see if I could fit one of our tracks in there. And I gave it to some of the crew guys, and they had fun, yeah, you know, because the software today has evolved enough that you can get um, satisfying results without feeling like you're performing surgery like you had to a few years ago. And I thought it'd be fun just to see what happens if we give it out to people, so I kind of bullshitted the record label that didn't really understand what I was talking about into giving out the master tracks, because I'm done with it. You know, I, I did it. I, I did my version of it. Here it is. If you like it, great. And I think that it's been fun for the tinkerer to get to have something to mess around. And I think it's just another way. And I don't think it's ultimately that important, to be honest with you. I don't think it's changing the world in any way, but I thought it would be fun to let people mess around with it. And people seem to have fun, those that are interested in it. Why not? I 
mean, it was never me going around with a sign over my head saying, call me this. You know, in, the, in media, I've learned tends to need to put you in some kind of category to understand it better. So, I mean, I don't mind it. I mean, I listen to that stuff and have been influenced by it. I don't think that Nine Inch Nails is a very uh, good example of what would define that. You know, you could kind of, I guess we're closer to that than we would be country rock. I don't think that we are we would be the, the band you would point to and say that's a definition of what this is. I mean, that's a good question. I've thought a lot about that. Um, in, in my opinion, the, the first step would be simply to ask yourself as a new band what it is you, where you want to be. You know, and I said a lot of this in a, in a blog I did the other day, but if you're looking for Coldplay level stardom, then you need a record label to help market you to get there. It's probably not going to happen off your MySpace page because those records are, and you two are the same thing, are, are orchestrated campaigns of media saturation. A lot of old school style, billboards, ads, commercials, etc. cetera. You know, um, buying spots on playlists on radio. Um, that's the only way you really make that kind of thing. Now, if you're trying to make cool music that you hope gets a 10.0 review on Pitchfork, I don't think you need to sign with a record label, you know, because, and if you're considering it, look at what you're, they're asking you to give up and ask yourself if it's worth it, because you don't need to do it these days, you know. Now they might become a bank and provide you with some funds to record a record and help you go on tour, and those are things you need to do. But what you don't need is someone to put your records in stores because nobody buys records anymore. And in the States, there really aren't any stores to even buy records. You know? There's no music stores left. So the big stranglehold of um, distribution, which is what they used to get you with, is gone. The cost of making a record is a fraction of what it used to be. And if you're smart about it, you know, you don't need the sushi tray every day. You know what I mean? You can do it in your bedroom. And it's a tough question because we're in between business models right now. You know, a few years ago, you pretty much had to sign with a label. Today, I would recommend not signing with a label. You know, but come up with a plan, and that plan better be more than we'll just get a MySpace page and hope somebody makes us stars. That's not a plan. Well, the day of the, of the new huge act, I think there's a lot of good bands that put out great material that I highly respect. But I don't think that the climate is right where you're going to get a band that can do that and also sell out arenas that just came out now. Because I don't think there's a big enough channel to push them up to get enough people. Does that make sense? You know, and I can think of what bands, that are, you know, the Killers have become big. They've been around for a few years. They've just put a few new records out, and they're doing well. You know, um, but I don't know. It's just a weird climate right now.
Thank you. Thank you very much.